Welcome to Triple Takeover Short Circuits, an ongoing YouTube series where we discuss Transformers cartoons from the past and present. Lads, last time we did talk about More Than Meets the Eye, Transformers Generation 1, Part 1. It's the first episode ever of the cartoon. It's Amazing. the pilot episode that kicked it all off. Well, we're back at it again for Part 2, naturally. Four million years have passed. Again. Four million years have passed and you're about to learn to swim. <laughs> and forgetting to fly. And maybe fly or not fly. We're not quite sure about that. <laughs> yeah. Depends on plot, doesn't it? That's I've literally got that as a note. Fly slash not fly. Who knows? Yeah. Do you know what I've got as a note is it would be great if people could leave a like for this video, please. But otherwise, I've got lots of other notes. I think this might be one of my favourite episodes of the cartoon, don't you know? Ooh. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh. I thought wow. I might surprise you with that. Because of like, it's got like a peak moment in it. Is that why? It is some of that, yeah. There's a lot that I like about this. And it, it's to be honest, it's only a realisation that hit me during this rewatch. I don't think I would have thought that before this. It's definitely, for me, the strongest part of this trilogy. Yeah. This is the most iconic episode, I think. Like a lot yes. of the iconography you recognise from the early days of Transformers is from this episode. Absolutely. A lot of the images yeah. and screen caps that pop up and that were used in sticker books, all those sort of things. Yeah. The identifying features of the Transformers Transformers pop up in this episode. And you don't just yeah. mean the axe and the, the little mace <laughs> weapon, do you? You don't just mean that. And the grappling hook and the, yeah. this. And the, All yeah. the accessories. Every single accessory. I was going to say, yeah. lots of stuff that 30 to 40 years later would be very, very helpful in making high-end toys. Yeah. Yeah. A masterpiece lane. That's it. Exactly. It's an advert selling toys with action features that they don't have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We waited forever. Prime didn't have an axe. Jazz didn't have a grappling hook. It's hilarious, actually, because I, I actually listed the special abilities that we see in this episode alone and it's it's amazing how many of them just have some random special feature this is where like hands retracting really comes into its own <laughs> and like something yeah. just pops out wheeljack yeah trailbreaker it's like yeah. my hand is retracted and what's popped out it's a narrative convenience you know it's like just whatever it happens to, <laughs> yeah. to need to be at that moment this is the uh like load bearing episode the one where they chuck in all of the little bits of like exposition and they show you the concept of what the transformers are who they are everything it all comes in here it's so true they can stick their arm out and stuff and then hound has a door even though he's a jeep or when he's a jeep that doesn't have doors <laughs> yeah. the door still opens which is actually the side of the car it's very strange <laughs> that's a really good point yeah there's the there's a lot of that stuff. Sunstreaker's got his little bum gun, yeah, all of that kind of stuff. True. Butt blaster. Totally. Starscream has a catapult for some reason, and no <laughs> toy has ever made a thing of that, which I find really strange. I was watching it going like, hello, yeah. why are you not doing that? I know. Steal it from Wheelie. And I mean, the Decepticons and Autobots are very confused by things on Earth. It's very obvious when they make the Energon cubes, because they are not cubes. They are like potato bags. <laughs> yeah, they they are. Come on, baggy, don't they? It's true. You've got to squish them down. Energon sacks. Yeah. The, the thing, there's a lot of confusion in this episode as well, because Spike at one point is like are they from the past are they from the future and it's just like oh, you know it's like what how did you get there he just told you they're from space you know but dare i say <laughs> the reason i really like this one is that it's a bit like now bear with me on this because i've thought it through okay right it's a bit like the empire strikes back of this opening trilogy isn't it so the fun begins. oh so oh you mean where the, is that cause bad the bad guys win, win. Yes, there we yeah. go. Thank you. Yeah, yes. totally. They, that makes sense. Yeah. A little bit tenuous. Well, but... I was thinking there are bits where they retract hands, but they don't get them chopped off. Somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, not, yeah. It wasn't the hands thing I was going for, but I see what I see why you're making the it leap It wasn't there. a hand job. Oh. It wasn't a hand job, oh, no. no. definitely <laughs> wasn't a hand job. Thank you, Liam. This is family-friendly fair on the old YouTube, thanks. But no, the bad guys do win, and I think that's why it's a strong episode overall, is because there feels like there's a genuine threat. Megatron is sort of semi-credible in this episode, like he has a decent plan. He's a tall maniac, though. Yeah. yeah. But he's but he knows what he's doing. He's, he's going for the old energy. He's actually quite successful. Yeah, Destroying everything. He, he does win a few fights, you know, like and it's all going well for them, pretty much. And standing on Prime's hands just to crush his fingers. Because <laughs> what every baddie does to prove that they're bad. You That's know. the ultimate evil move. There's no <laughs> there's is, no yeah. bigger evil move than standing on someone's <laughs> fingers. That's like a high level of, of bad guyery. But he's probably uh I'm gonna try and say this very long word, megalomaniacal. You know, that he's uh he's what? He's just, oh, megalomaniacal. <laughs> it's a real word. I promise you. It's got so many letters in it, I had to write it down. Okay. You know. But he's a mega malign. Oh, I can't do it now. Throw you off. <laughs> Say it again. Go, go, go do it again. <laughs> Megalomaniacal. Okay, sure. <laughs> I know. It's getting worse. Meg 
megalomaniacal. Oh, I can't now. This is really hard. Do you mean megalomaniacal, oh. Jason? Yeah, I do. That's it. Thanks, Liam. There we go. That's it. Woof. That was hard. Yeah. <laughs> this is ambitious stuff for YouTube, mate. I tell you. <laughs> I know. It really He's evil. Is. He's evil. That's it. Yeah, properly evil. But it's the fact that he goes to the dam to get all the energy and then just starts destroying the dam by walking through the walls, blowing up the ceiling. It's a power move, isn't it? Just put this lock on the door. <laughs> well, yeah, it's exactly. Hello, yeah. Kiwi, it's Megatron here. <laughs> Megatron. Smash. Come in and borrow some of your energy chaps. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a bit like the evil version of the Kool-Aid guy, isn't he? All right. There you go. Exactly <laughs> oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that is, yeah, he does swagger in like that, doesn't he? Very as well. much so. But yeah. I think that oh, moment no. is quite important for me because it's like the whole conceit here is robots in disguise and the Autobots are kind of still doing their bit despite spilling all their darkest secrets to two humans in hard hats. But yeah. then Megatron just isn't having any of it. He's just like, here I am, bitches. You know, it's, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't Telling care everyone who all. is. It's because he's megalomaniacal. Oh, you, there you go. That's how you say it. <laughs> Sounded really good, Liam. Well done. <laughs> it oh. did sound really good. That was great. <laughs> so I feel I have to pick up on some of the silly stuff then in this because I, I did make a bit of a list. Firstly, the oil rig bit. Now, <laughs> I recall in the last episode that there were certainly more than two humans here, right? So I presume the rest are dead at the end of this scene <laughs> drowned yeah you see them in the water because you see wheeljack and stuff flying over oh good yeah. you see them on, on top of the rig as it's going under as well. <laughs> so maybe yeah waving dead. bye so they're dead <laughs> they're, they're dead, all dead. Yeah. we've established that it's kind of i think they're off to the left with blue streak and wind charge and those guys right. <laughs> yeah exactly I, I do love the whole thing of like spark plug immediately is like oh we can help you and optimus is like uh, no no it's probably a little bit dangerous but my son spike and i know more about earth than you do and optimus <laughs> is just like like, yeah, you're, you're probably right, actually. Okay, then, come on yeah, board. Yeah, exactly. Rubs his chin as well, like, mmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so Fair funny. enough. Yeah. yeah, welcome on board. Good yeah. resume. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, later on, Sparkplug gets killed by Thundercracker, of course. What? Really? <laughs> yeah. He stra- have you not seen this? He straight up gets punched right in the middle of the oh, chest yeah, by they, Thundercracker. They, they, yeah, but he's, they all survive these things, though, when he's under ruby mines. And he's slammed into a... Oh, I, into a, a rock face he's he's dead yeah but there's the whole superhuman spike as well the hound's trapped under the water not able to get out of a mound of rocks and then can't lift it and then spike swims down <laughs> lifts up his huge rock so he can escape you know I think you guys are missing out on why they've got these powers from that little stylish looking kettle and cup set that they have you know when they yes, drink a cup of tea while yeah, playing the around trailbreaker. with a trailbreaker yeah, in the woods oh. I think that gives them the powers so that's when they're not wearing helmets that's the one time where they're not wearing helmets yeah you know? helmet watch is important it's going to be an, a recurring <laughs> thing in these episodes i think and helmet watch in this is big because let me tell you there are very there are some humans without helmets and we'll come back to them because they're important but mostly all the humans have hard hats in this don't they helmets that's how you identify humans yeah, yeah. do you think the artists are like rob liefeld where he can't draw feet these guys can't draw hair maybe it was like a nod to pretenders so they were just trying to you those know. hats should be in a bag that's exactly <laughs> But it is funny because you're right. They take them off for the tea moment. They're having their little cup of tea and they take the hats off and then they get back in trail break and they put the hats back on. And it's like, boys, you're not on the oil rig anymore. Uh-huh. It's okay. It's like safety first. You know, that trail breaker could transform at any time and crush their heads. So, you know, they'll be protected. Apparently, Spark Plug has also worked the mines. So uh, I'm <laughs> guessing that it's. <laughs> Probably done just, everything. Yeah, I know. The guy just wears a hard hat all the time, I guess. Just never know what kind of yeah. situation he's going to get himself into. I mean, he does get punched into a wall and killed in this episode. So, you know, perhaps some <laughs> yeah. sort of full body armor might be more appropriate. I don't know. What was he doing in the Ruby Mines of Burma? You know, how does he get to an oil rig from there? He worked them. Well, that guy, he's in all the energy. <laughs> he worked them. As what? <laughs> He worked them. (laughs) I'd love to see his passport. Now, one of the other funny humans with a hard hat, though, is the man hitting the gauge. Have you seen this? When it's when all the tidal wave is kicking off and everything, and he's like, "It's going crazy," and he just starts. How you fix it? Starts thumping that thing (laughs) like he's going to water (laughs) back. Exactly. (laughs) When Spike hits the alarm as well, it just makes that very like peaceful alarm sound. Like, yeah, yeah. Get up and walk out, evacuate quietly. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Comparative to the dam alarm which is like the sound of my childhood I think I've seen that alarm so many times in this cartoon that it's become ingrained in my brain somehow you know it's like that a woo 
Woo. Yeah, it's yeah, like a core totally. memory in there somehow. In that section when Soundwave sends Rumble under the water, there's a really nice bit of animation where the animators had a lot of fun. Yeah. And Soundwave does this really nice arm kind of tidal wave movement oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Cool. And it's just lovely. Yeah, the animation in this one, I think, is a little bit more inconsistent than the previous part, maybe, but there's some good yeah, stuff in there true. for sure. Rumble's yeah, walk yeah, into the water, his cool oh, walk. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Reservoir dogs. Yeah, the swagger. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 <laughs> totally. <laughs> Without a word as well. Well, no it's dialogue so good yeah and then he shoves spike later <laughs> which is great spike should also be dead you know he's yeah tried to fight that guy twice now i do want to acknowledge that Soundwave here has taken a bit of a turn for the worse because last time i feel like he was the most credible character of all of them and this time <laughs> round, a bit like megatron in the last one his plan is shit. like i'm sorry yeah. but it's what is best. he doing his plan is to hang around hide behind a rock spy on the boy whilst he's writing in his diary and then hope to be picked up and carried in as a walkman at which point he's just casually discarded on the side yeah you say this plan is <laughs> but it works it, it does work exactly as intent to get it's taken just a in. lot of coincidences that have Robots to happen to get him in there. disguise you know yeah. it literally is on the box that's the thing trial breaker says that as well when they ask why do you transform he goes disguise, yeah. disguise and hand waves it away and they go off and you're like <laughs> yeah. why would you need exactly. to be in disguise all the time on your home planet <laughs> yeah where are you, who are you hiding from but then when spike asks him to see it trail breaker walks him all the way through the arc and goes hound he wants to see it you show him <laughs> <laughs> and just plug us off again and it's like okay couldn't be, couldn't be asked then and there's a whole other building yeah where, where's that building where did that come from prefab it's like a wendy house isn't it or a trailer tent they just whip it out <laughs> they do build stuff very quickly in this they show do. It's, they do. Yeah, it's like rapid isn't it yeah but you know soundway's plan though and i will come back to this because his plan is to acquire knowledge that you could get readily from tv i don't want to say the internet because this was 1984 but go to the local library whatever it might be <laughs> yeah. and then uh, i just put exit strategy question mark because it seems to be that like he just runs out of there first he exposes himself to spot i don't know how that sounds but <laughs> yeah wrong stop that sound wave how does that yeah how, well yeah we'll we'll get there don't worry but yeah Soundwave just full-on gives up the old disguise takes a little swipe at him and then buggers off and leaves ravage behind and also gives ravage away ravage could have stayed in there and no one would have known but he's like ravage eject and then he jumps and he gets captured you know showing it's his like, care for his pet cat but like you gotta remember you know just on the other side of it they don't know about tv and stuff like that yet do they do you it's think not that's been what around it is? long enough yeah oh yeah of, co- uh, of course and the decepticons turn into tellies they turn into cameras and stereos and stuff but not a telly yeah the bot bots haven't been made yet they don't know about the uh the single most global method of communication <laughs> at that point the radio wave yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they can't yeah they can't pick up any radio waves or yeah. i mean, I mean to be fair they use reflector regularly as a camera and then get the paper photo out <laughs> get this <laughs> is true <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe they didn't have TV four million years ago on Cybertron. Yeah. Maybe it's just a completely new thing. Although them. there is a the bit later on where Trailbaker is listening in with his big satellite yeah, dish. Yeah. I did think as well, I mean, Ravage probably would have got away if it wasn't for the fact that uh, Gears had a lovely little red light that he could just shine he did, on. Didn't he? It's <laughs> infrared, yeah. apparently. Infrared, that's how it works. It's one of those other special abilities. And the electro net that needs both jazz and who else was it? <laughs> Prowl, I think it was. Yeah. The synchronized net. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was exactly. another hand retracty one. Did you see? They retract their hands for that in unison. It's so good. There was some dialogue that I want to address in this as well, though. Uh, Megatron's insults are. Uh, well, they vary. There's, your knowledge is only overshadowed by your stupidity, which that had me raising my eyebrows a little bit, that one. I don't know if it's quite the burn, the sick burn that oh. you maybe anticipated. <laughs> I like this scene. I enjoyed Starscream, the, another classic Starscream moment of, you know, yeah, where it is, isn't it? It, Megatron has conceived this whole plan. They've built all this stuff and Starscream thinks that he's the one who's done it all just because he pressed a button on a machine. Yeah, so right. I pressed it, so it's, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, did it, it was all. Me. Did you press the switch? <laughs> Classic star scream. There's another really nice line, which I always remember. Prime, when he enters and goes, stick it in neutral, Megatron. Yeah, Which I like is that. a great line, except Megatron's not a vehicle. He's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's the only one you can't say that to. Highlight of this episode for me is Ironhide with the immortal line, stop <gasps> talking, tighten your shock absorbers and get in. I just yeah. I cheer every time, honestly. Peter Cullen at his finest. What a sequence as well. I love seeing his, you know, from his battle deck, battle platform. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the laser. The, the, yeah. the laser. And it does something. I love that. Drilling out that, that really poor riverbed 
that then manages to capture all the water in the world. <laughs> Which is important, though, because then it reveals our first ever female character in the Transformers cartoon. This is groundbreaking <laughs> oh stuff. The only fuck. woman to have appeared in either the previous episode or this episode, and she appears in this sequence. And you may have missed her, but if you zoom in real close, she's sitting there, little human lady on top of the house. She doesn't speak, I don't think, but she briefly waves. I think you can kind of hear her voice in the background, but that's oh the, the, the only female character we've had in this cartoon up until this point. We need a masterpiece figure of her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why has that never happened? Lady on roof. <laughs> yeah, lady on roof, exactly. <laughs> now, talking about the dialogue again, I will say that that is 100% better than some of the other stuff, like Huff Foot and brawn right at the start like the whole oh. there's two things i don't like <laughs> there's fire and water oh you're in the right place like what what is this why am i listening what? to and then even better the one says to the other let's take off and they do yeah. they just and they just go what, what am what? i watching why is his arm stuck in a little bit of metal honestly it's like so sweet isn't it it's not <laughs> really stuck though it's like what my son does when he wants a bit of attention it's like yeah, oh, he wants to, i'm stuck you know help yeah help. <laughs> come and rescue me there's a bit in this as well where the autobots all have this kind of heart to heart moment and prime gives them the we can do this guys it's all good don't worry about it but the, all the other ones are just like oh this is this is really hard i don't know if i want to do yeah this. it's quite touching <laughs> actually it's quite touching it's, yeah. again it's huffer saying we're not fighters like them it's sort of like oh mate totally it's, it's okay a little bit more to the autobots because in that first episode all about the decepticons predominantly and then that's the one bit where the autobots get a little bit more to them than, yeah. than previously conversely in this one this is the real rise of the other guys at this point like a million seekers oh everywhere there's the one panning shot where they're collecting energon and there's nine of them just all <laughs> vaguely blue sky warps and thundercrackers everywhere it's just like i mean yeah. are they building them as they're going what's happening here and the strike <laughs> so force funny. that they assemble is just like who are half these people it's like <laughs> just randomly <laughs> recolored <laughs> background characters real red shirts you know little did they know that 40 years later the tf wiki would exist and these would all have names and official bios <laughs> yeah, and exactly. yeah exactly exactly appearances um, in the back corner of a panel of a comic from 1997 well some of these are people's favorite characters now that's the thing like they've become that's real it. iconic Bill, characters peter <laughs> James. Iconic is a stretch. <laughs> Favourite characters I get. Iconic is a stretch. It'll be the next Haslab. That's what it'll be. I stand unnamed Blue Seeker 75. <laughs> He's the best, that guy. I, I just love that feel guy. a connection. Uh, do you think there was a little time <laughs> jump there as well during that whole sequence? Because it's snowing at one point and then it's sort of summery. <laughs> and I think it was genuinely, no joking aside, I know it could just be a different part of the world, but I think it sort of implies that there's a time jump because then they've suddenly built their cruiser and they're kind of like almost yeah, ready. So they're, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they've gone and got loads of energy at that point. They go to the ruby crystals of Burma, which apparently is enough to power the entire planet of Cybertron. (laughs) I know. What? (laughs) Yeah. An all robotic metal planet. Just from some crystals, some nice rocks. That's pretty impressive. Now, we would be remiss with this episode if we didn't talk about the trash talk, because... The classic scene on Sherman Dam. Oh, that's great. That's that's iconic. Yeah. I will say, I watched this with my six-year-old, and his first comment to me was, why are they standing around talking and not just fighting? And <laughs> I, I was sort of left mouth agape, like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's a fair yeah, point. Yeah. Prime has a lot of bravado. He really does. Do you think yeah. it's an axe? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh dear. I love this scene. It's, I think most people do. It's one of the most iconic, again, from the whole of the sort of G1 cartoon, isn't it? Despite the fact it's the only time they both engage those two weapons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of time those weapons would come in handy later on, but they're yeah. never used. Yeah. Like flying. A lot of those special <laughs> abilities, really. Nets, a face mask, yeah. at one point, a catapult, all of that stuff. Special shout out as well. Optimus Prime is very round in this episode. Like, he in is, these early he? ones, he's got a different, slightly yeah. different shape to what you associate with him normally, isn't he? He's, a little bit yeah. curvier. He looked really good. Yeah. Slender. It's like a teenager just kind of yeah. becoming, going from that point of like teen to man, you know, just becoming <laughs> Where more Where is rugged. this going? This has gone to a really <laughs> weird place <laughs> now. Like... He's a bit less boxy. There's a little yeah. bit. Yes. Yeah. A little bit more. I just, agree yeah. with that. That's what more TV chest it. than microwave. Yeah. And of course, there's a real attempt to advertise the toy with Roller popping up right at the end now. <gasps> or R2-D2. As he yeah, should it <laughs> totally is R2-D2, isn't it? It makes exactly that sound as he just, oh, it's so cute. Oh, Optimus Prime's eyes. When they make that weird yeah, noise. Yeah, the flash. I don't like it. 
something's wrong. Why? Yeah, they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Megatron does it as well Why? at one point. Yeah, he does. Flash. He yeah. does the old eye flash. Yeah, but I used to yeah. love that as a kid. The eye flash. Yeah, it's great. No need for it. It's oh great. man, that was like a total power move. Like I'm gonna flash my eyes at you, and that yeah. lets what you know how serious. Why does it need it's, the sound? It, it's a power move. It's a power move. <laughs> Optimus <laughs> yeah. is doing it to his little buddies. He's just befriended. Why is he like? Yeah, yeah. You with this noise yeah. coming from my eyes. Showing off. Yeah, he's actually showing off. Look at how cool my eyes are. Look at them. That's all it is. My eyes made that noise. I'd be off down the ENT department at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the bloody hell's going on, guys? Yeah, you're not a giant robot, are you, that we know about? Uh, sadly. There are, there are lots of weird sound effects in this, though. I mean, there's also, uh, like, the Energon cubes sound like Star Trek doors. In fact, I think they are yeah. Star Trek doors, yeah. stuff like this. Yep. Pretty sure there's a lightsaber sound at one point. It's worth shouting out as well, the slow-mo of Prime falling off the smallest cliff edge ever but it lasting for ages as he just keeps falling, and falling it's a and monumental falling. moment yeah it is you know and it's like no could fly at any point could just <laughs> could, fly off. Could, exactly could do but doesn't he's lost roller though it is heartbreaking and even though we know they can fly sometimes they still drive which is the slowest way to get there over the desert you know in a line they still drive but they also still drown like what's going on there? Like Optimus <laughs> is in the river at one point, going, "Ah, save me!" Oh, no. And Jazz has to twice. Jazz has to throw a grappling hook to get him out of the water in this episode. I enjoy him getting swept away when you think he's a several ton metal hulk. <laughs> Rumble doesn't seem to have these troubles in that water, and Spike seems to navigate it all right. But Optimus Prime, physics, get me a yeah. rope. We don't need to worry about physics. <laughs> we have forgotten one very iconic, a slightly odd moment as well, which is Hound and Spike's. Intimate moment. Oh, my God. Forgotten slash bleached it from... Yeah. <laughs> you know, after he's rescued Hound from the... Careful. From the depths. They just have that extra special moment, don't they? Which, it, they're um, bonding. has to be seen to be believed, <laughs> really. Binary bonding. <laughs> yeah, binary bonding. <laughs> what I will say about this sequence is that if you've heard the deleted scene audio, it's from earlier where uh, Hound gives Spike the ride of his life. There is a little bit more audio from that, which I think if you splice that audio with this sequence, you'll get some quite interesting <laughs> results, I should imagine. Hold tight! Yahoo! Yippee! Wow! Thanks, Hound. That's the greatest ride I've ever had. My pleasure, Spike. I better go check my coil springs. But all in all, then, did we enjoy this episode? Did you guys enjoy this as much as me? Yeah. It's one of the best. It's one of the best G1 episodes. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I would agree. I'm a big fan of this one. I think it's a great second part to this trilogy. I'm excited for the rewatch of the third one as well. So you'll have to join us for that for for next time. Uh, If you do want more of this, though, then you should listen to Triple Takeover, our fortnightly podcast, where you can get all of this kind of banter, but in long form. And we do have a Patreon as well, so you might want to check that out because we've got five glorious tiers of content and you can actually get weekly weekly exclusive content as well as a pretty popping discord full of lovely people so popping. it's popping it's absolutely <laughs> popping <laughs> popping like yeah. mad it's popped join the rest of the beatniks <laughs> yeah why don't you come on in and join the don't fun. be a square <laughs> absolutely that <laughs> like yes. optimus prime's chest yeah well, there you go so <laughs> That's it, it. All, yeah. it all syncs up link for all of that is down in the description below don't forget to drop us a like and a subscribe and a whatever other things youtube is good for comments yeah, yeah. comments give us some comments yeah talk about this episode and let us know your thoughts on it as well and otherwise we'll see you for the next one